Good afternoon, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick here at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church in Hazlitt, Texas. It is Saturday, April the 1st. It's time for our daily devotion. We are in a very special psalm today, Psalm 22, and we'll talk more about this in a minute, but let's get started. We're going to read the psalm in its entirety, Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? O my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer, by night, and am not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. In you our fathers put their trust, they trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. In you they were trust in you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me, they hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me to trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan encircle me, roaring lions tearing their prey, open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax, it has melted away within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of the earth. Dogs have surrounded me, a band of evil men has encircled me, they have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. But you, O Lord, be not far off. Will my strength come quickly to help me? Deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my brothers. In the congregation I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him, revere him all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise. In the great assembly, before those who fear you, will I fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. They who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, posterity will serve them. Future generations will be told of the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, for he has done it. Psalm 22 is usually read at the end of the Holy Thursday service as the altar, lectern, and pulpit are stripped. As colorful pyramids are removed, bare wood remains. Wood is a long history in the Bible. It reminds us about what took place on the tree of Golgotha where our Lord once died. This Holy Week, we highlight both the old rugged cross and its close counterpart, water. Noah built a wooden ark to save his family of eight numerous animals from the watery flood. Moses threw a log of wood into the bitter waters of Merah to sweeten them. Finally, Elijah used a wooden stick to make an iron axe head float so that it could be retrieved from the Jordan River. These images of wood with water are not accidental. They are crucial to understanding the depth and width of God's salvation at the cross and through holy baptism. Jesus uplifts sinners, raises the dead, and sweetens all sour experiences through his, rugged, through his cross and your baptism. Jesus Christ is your refuge, lifesaver, and rock, now and forever. All right, so Psalm 22 is a, is a familiar psalm for a lot of different reasons. As the author said, it is the psalm that is often sung um, in our case, or, or read as the altar is stripped at the, at the Monday Thursday service. It's also read as a bit of a litany in the Good Friday service. And uh, if the words are familiar, it, it's, it's so strikingly, it seems so strikingly written for the crucifixion. And of course, we believe that it is. But we're talking about the Psalms here. I mean, these were written thousands of years before Jesus was crucified. 
So, you know, sometimes people ask, well, is there proof that the Bible is real? Well, I mean, boy, if Psalm 22 isn't proof, I don't know what is. Because it has this just about word-for-word -word description of the crucifixion of Jesus from his detractors from to how he is pierced with the nails and his hands and his feet to, to how he is mocked um, to how he has been abandoned to how God has forsaken him I mean all of this is just a, a word-for-word -word prophecy about the crucifixion and uh, it really is is chilling um, to, to see just how appropriate this psalm is for uh, predicting um, our salvation happening at, at Calvary. Now, in the psalm itself, uh, it does start out with this cry of this, um, this petition, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So this is a psalm that is also read by, by worshipers, by petitioners, by people like us who feel like we're in a, a place of suffering in our lives. Uh, you know, you'll notice the psalmist, he, he doesn't, he's not specific about his complaint, um, his main complaint isn't that he is sick or that he is persecuted. His main complaint is that he feels abandoned by God. And that, you know, permeates the rest of the psalm. And, and this is the, the real problem that he wants to fix. Uh, not his ailment, not whatever he's praying for, but the fact that, that he is separated from God and, and feels uh, forsaken and cast off by God. And so it, it does start out as a psalm of lament, and it goes through this for about the first 22 verses. And then you have this switch where now you have uh, you know, a prayer for deliverance, and then you have praise at the end of, of the psalm. And this is kind of characteristic of a lot of psalms that anticipate that God will, that anticipates that God will respond, um, that he will respond favorably, that he will uh, deliver the psalmist, that, that he will bless him, that, that he will uh, not forsake him, but will turn his face towards him. And, uh, and, and show him blessing and favor. And this is obviously, you know, our use of the psalm. And, and we know that, that God does hear our prayers for the sake of Jesus and for the sake of everything that happens at the initial beginning portion of the psalm when um, Jesus is the one who is forsaken and, you know, talks about himself as being a worm and not a man and, uh, you know, being brought down in, into, the, into the depths. And, and so this psalm is definitely one that we're going to be hearing uh, in Holy Week at our Monday Thursday and our Good Friday service. And so um, it's definitely a, a psalm that, that moves us and that, that speaks of our salvation, this Old Testament writing uh, that glorifies God by pointing to the cross and describing almost like a hymn uh, exactly what, what is Jesus is going through and um, edifying us, comforting us, with the good news that, that God had our salvation in mind even back into the Old Testament and as we know in Genesis, even from the beginning of creation. All right, let's continue now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. All right, uh, announcements for today. So uh, tomorrow night, Sunday, we have confirmation happening at its usual time at 6 p.m. And then uh, Monday night, we have a uh, get together of the Alt altar guild and the elders um, for the purpose of running through our uh, Easter vigil service. So uh, this is going to be a little bit of a dry run. We're going to talk about some things, and so it's important if everybody can be up here for that. Um, it's going to be a, a very uh, important time to be here, and we're going to get some things ready for the vigil. Uh, Tuesday night, we have a planning meeting for the Ice Cream Social that's happening at, at 7 p.m., and then Wednesday night, there is choir practice happening. I can't remember the exact time. It might be different, but there's also... Actually, no, I don't think there's youth group this week, I think, because it's Holy Week. Um, Elizabeth decided to postpone it, but, but stay tuned for more announcements on Monday and Tuesday, and we'll get you uh, the most up-to-date information about that. And then, of course, next week, um, Monday, Thursday is happening uh, at 7 p.m., Good Friday at 7 p.m. Well, the prayer vigil still has some sign-up sheets or some sign-up slots, and then the Vesper service will be at 7 p.m. And then Easter morning, it's flipped now to 7 a.m. And then 10.30 uh, a.m. for the late service, 
with the Easter egg hunt happening, the Easter breakfast happening, Easter breakfast, I think it's 8.15, Easter egg hunt is 9.15. We're going to do a hymn sing in between those two time frames. So um, if you'd like to join us, there'll be something here happening from 7 in the morning up until probably noon on Easter Sunday. All right, that's all the announcements I have for today. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll be back on Monday. God bless this the rest of your Saturday.